Hello everybody, welcome to the official replay cast of the round 32 clash between Le Marzolet and Serafino. This is game number two, uh, Serafino won the first one. Apparently a tabletop um, player from Italy who qualified through the Wild Thing Studio Wild Cup up against Le Mars, who's a name known to Blood Bowl 2 and 3 players, qualified through this season 5 official playoffs. And uh, yeah, Lamar's won Andy Davos' group, so he came through a really tough group there into into a really tough uh, round of 32 match. Uh, I actually prefer Lamar's team overall, and specifically for the mirror, because he hasn't got the tree, which is obviously really slow, and doesn't really do anything. Um, you just walk away from him. Interesting that he's benched a catcher rather than a lineman. He obviously values the strength here. Um, interesting, interesting. I've got leader. I, so I, what I don't like about this is, yeah, it's it's not as good as Kfog's build. I don't think Kfog got an extra dodge in and an apple, whereas he's gone for the reserve. Uh, he's got stripper. He's got a tackler. He's got a couple of wrestle, a couple of dodge. Whereas Serafino's gone more um, one turn focused. He's got a grab tree. He's got a he's got a frenzier. He's got a, a sprinter. Not even sized up a sprinter. And then leader and stuff. Uh, Reroll. Uh, sorry, re -roll. Apple for Serafino. Ah, oh, there you go. Serafino played for Team Italy in the last Euro, but there you go. So, yep. I think it was Tree said that uh, he was a top table topper. Top table topper. So, you know, maybe, maybe he might make UI errors, right? That's the thing. This is a Blood Bowl 3 tournament, so. Who knows? Grab trees, nothing. No, it's it's all right. It's just it's it's just it's just very one turn focus, isn't it? The grab, the grab, and the frenzy and the sprint. Like it's fair enough. Like one turns are a big part of it. One turns a big part. I think what's nuts is uh, is Olivier's jump up tree. I am not a fan of the jump up tree at all, at all. I don't like that. But I I love his uh, sidestep catches and frenzy dancer for the one turn. No, it's just having a tree. Oh, grab these nuts. Okay. <laughs> well, never mind. There's a gaping hole here if he wants it, right? Because he can just move the tree out of the way and come through and blitz this catcher, but it doesn't. Remains disciplined. Well, punches into the tree as well, which is quite nice. No oh dear Lord. Oh dear. I mean three dicing with them with the tree is better than you know moving him out of the way. But I wonder if he thought about moving him out of the way and blitzing this catcher. It's kinda of tempting, right, just to get get a threat through instantly. It's funny because when I'm commentating, I always say like, oh, could go for the ball here, could do something on the ball, but <laughs> if you watch my game, it's always just like, screen, 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 screen. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's more interesting. You've got to think about how feasible is the sack, right? And you've got to think about things like this all the time. Oh, dodging the cage. Oh, do you know what, Rolex? He didn't do anything like that, but yeah, okay, that's pretty cool. That's actually pretty a cool thing to do, yeah, I didn't think of that. Okay, that's pretty cool. That's a cool thing you can do with it. it the problem is he lost two dodge to do it right. He lost two dodge, and he's only got two re-rolls. And he, he gave up two dodge to give the jump up the tree, so I, I don't know. I think, I think two dodge lionels is better. But, um... I mean, look, Olivier's top-rated player on tabletop, and he likes it, so... I'm not saying it's bad, I'm just saying I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. So this is like a, an old elf stall kind of idea, isn't it? Uh, 
Oh. Fails the dodge. The tree managed to base one of the people without dodge. I wonder if the tree's going to go here to get another one without dodge. Ah, oh, not a city. Fair enough. That's probably better, isn't it? You don't need to go too deep with the tree. Funnily enough, if he'd had everything just a bit closer, right? Like, this is the thing. Serafino was pretty, pretty, um... Pretty conservative, right? If he'd been a little bit less conservative last time, maybe the stripper could have been in... I mean, maybe he'd have just gone deeper. He would have definitely gone deeper. But you don't know, right? People don't always judge everything correctly, right? And he could have maybe just left the ball in range of the stripper. And, you know, maybe this catcher could have been in scoring range. And you can easily say, well, he would have just been deeper. And yeah, he probably would have been. But if if you remember, I played a game versus Elliot in Era BB, where I counted the dancers to make sure I was out of range of the dancers and then got sacked by uh, one of the Wood Elf linemen. And, and that can definitely happen, right? Like a random Wood Elf line can just randomly sack you. Like this one could. This one's literally in range. Look, this would have been one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, rush, rush. Like that could have happened. It literally could have happened this turn. It would have been like some twos to 1D the ball. So he probably could have had assists as well. Um, yeah, interesting. And now he's going to base in front. Again, I would have just liked this guy like over the line, right? Just so he can be a score. I guess he's got enough now, but earlier in the game I would have liked this guy just over the line, so he could maybe score with him. Something more for him to think about, isn't it? How all kinds of them. Hands off to the dancer. In a Venger bus. Rolls another one. This time puts spends a re-roll. Three two through there. So yeah, I guess if this was an orc team, last action you could just move your tree in, and then you've got the tree on the ball. Yeah, okay, okay. I see. I see a nice little thing for the. Uh, that's a nice use use case that I hadn't thought of for the jump up tree. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And yeah, and if you just roll the six, then you've just got a tree on the ball standing, yeah. Yeah, okay, so I, I, I don't dislike the jump up tree as much as I did. Get to removal. Lovely. Lovely, uh, lovely colours on these teams, I think. The, uh, the light blue and the uh, mostly white with a bit of red. Very nice. Very nice customizations. Uh, not the best cheerleaders or uh, sidelines, but you know, nobody's perfect. Wow, this is still tricky for Lamar's, isn't it? Oh, critical one in thirty-six. If that had failed, it's game over almost. That's the thing, isn't it? In these in these elf offs, you've just got to limit how many absolute game losing one in thirty six is you risk, right? You could have moved the ball first into this cage that didn't exist, maybe. Yeah, because he hasn't blitzed, so he could have just moved all that first, right? So that the one in thirty six had it happened. No, no, he had blitzed. Oh my god, I'm an idiot. I don't know, anyway, the point is, maybe you could have moved this, like, one over right first. Maybe this whole cage could have been one over without without dodging. That's the thing, I'm just, I'm just terrified of 1 in 36s, honestly. I'm honestly just terrified of ever failing a dice, ever rolling any dice. <laughs> Which isn't, you know... Probably isn't a great place to be in for playing Blood Bowl, because, you know, you do have to roll dice eventually. And especially in the later rounds, you know, you're not going to be able to get through the whole game without rolling a critical 1 in 36. Multiple critical 1 in 36s will have to be rolled. But all you can do is try to limit 
the amount. But even then, you you might not even have to do that, right? Because you, if you, if you can get into a much stronger position, I thought that was something Truk failed to do versus Devo, right? I think he should have taken more risks for a higher payoff. Yeah. This is a uh, gate dodge up here, so that's probably the play, I think. Just dodge your whole team through here. Gets the knockdown. And I think we're going to go everything through here. No, he's already done it, so yeah, that's what he's thinking too. Not sure about the handoff. Okay, it's, it's because he's got the on default, hasn't he? He's got that by default. That's why it's uh, going up. Yep, everything comes through on that two plus. Well, I'm glad I saw that on the replay instantly. Uh, well done, Jim. <laughs> Don't know how long. You know, he might have been doing this. The thing is, well, you probably see that straight. Like, if you're playing this in real life, like, if you if you're for the Mars, right, you, you see that play instantly. And then you think about it for, like, a minute and a half, thinking, is there something better? Can I, you know, what do I do if I push? Can I do something safer? It's like, there's all sorts of things to think about, but that looked, you know, looked pretty good, didn't it, to get through in this big old cage. Full power. Five two, probably higher than that, Dementor, I think. Don't quote me. <laughs> Oh. oh, but that was a 3% and it was a fail. Right. Let's go back in time. <laughs> Tiny bit less. So was this the start? So he didn't, this guy could have just blocked. Right, which is a 1 in 81 to move him. Um, whereas this, if you don't power him, you've got to make a 1 in 36. You can comment on Andy's game, yeah, Machina, you can. It's uh, we've, we've done that one already. You also had this guy. Um, could have moved him up anywhere. There's a secondary scoring threat up here. Or over here in case of failure, could have blocked with a, could have blitzed with a catcher, right? Could have blitzed down, try and stop himself making them like. Of course, like you want to blitz with block, but you've got to think about what happens if you push, and then you've got to dodge, right? You don't want to have to dodge. You don't have to. So, also you don't want to use rerolls. So like it, it's tricky, right? Like if he gets the seventy-five percent knockdown, he doesn't have to dodge. Um, if he does have to dodge, it's still one thirty-six. So it's still pretty unlucky. You know, hard to just call it wrong that you did that. Because 1 in 9 to use your reroll on this block seems horrible, right? I think he's going to make a bunch of rolls afterwards. Good defense by Serafino. Oh, dub skulls. Dub pals. I might have been tempted to go for a scatter, but it's only a 3 plus, isn't it? Also, probably could have moved this catcher into range like first. Oh, but that wasn't moving him into range. That was rolling a two plus, and it did fail. So yeah, I, I liked I like just moving him into range <laughs> and not you know, and then go for the pickup and the dancer. Oh. Yeah, one in thirty-six has happened. It's funny, isn't it? It's funny because it's funny because I like I like that catcher as a scoring threat last turn, right? If he'd moved this catcher up here, then this guy wouldn't have won in thirty-six. I think he's still a scoring threat. 
No, he's one shot. This guy wouldn't have made the dodge if this guy had been scoring threat. But on the other hand, maybe you'd have filled the pick up and then maybe you'd have had this catcher as a scoring threat. So, super interesting. I imagine there's been lots of uh, time bank used here. Oh, fails the pick up. So yeah, he's not in range now. Just one shot. And there's no real way to get him in range. Oh, wait, no, there's grab! Oh, he's dub scold. He powered. He actually, so he could have, he could have grabbed him to here, right? And he could have chained this guy one forward, maybe. It would have been like a million rolls, but that grab could have actually set up chaining this guy one forward. That would have been maybe play of the tournament had it worked, but it didn't. <laughs> That, that could have been a real nice play. Real nice play. So, nil-nil after Lamar's Allaire's... Lamar's Allaire? I don't have no idea. Lamar's, I'll call him Lamar's. Lamar's offence fails. Now Serafino can win 1-0 or draw nil-nil. So the onus is on... Um, Lamar's to come and try and take the ball off him, right? He'll quite happily just cage around the thing. Wait, when did this happen? Oh my, I'm the worst. I'm the, I'm the worst. Don't tell anybody that I'm the worst commentator. Right. It was turn eight. It was this turn and I was just thinking, I was just talking about this bloody chain. And he just randomly, instead he just blitzed this guy and killed him. Oh my god. Apple fails as well. That's just, that's probably better than scoring, yeah. <laughs> it's not better than scoring, but it's pretty good. Right. Sorry, everybody. I do apologise. Do you know what? The worst thing was that, that Duran, Beyonce said nothing better than elves killing each other and I just didn't register and that that's a swing from Azorius. Like people said things and I just didn't pay, I just didn't click that he'd killed a bloody dancer. Oh my goodness. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine players. Yep, no reserve. Nine players for Serafino. Maybe he has to try and score early. Maybe he has to score early and then like go for a 1-1 one -one draw, right? Make it a shootout because he's got less players. Marseille? Marseille? Lamar's. I'm just going to go Lamar's. Yeah, sleep deprivation. Yeah, yeah. Not my fault. It's the sleep deprivation. I'm the best commentator. It's just sleep deprivation. <laughs> to be fair, I didn't have a lot of sleep. And uh, I did get up to do the Andy sequence live and to get these done before the potential game between, no, the actual game between Wentros. Obviously I knew that there was going to be Wentros versus Sahu, but I had to pretend that uh, it was a possibility there wasn't that game. So I knew that game was happening at five. Gets a removal there. So nine versus 10, not terrible. I'm a big fan of not picking up at the thrower and just getting on the dancer straight away. Like this does give you the freedom to distribute it to somebody else and potato or whatever. But I don't know, give, give me it on a dancer and let me try and play Blood Bowl. But you know, these people who play a lot of elves, they're not afraid of the two plus are they? They're nowhere near as afraid of the two plus as I am, so they're okay. They're okay with this. <laughs> it is turning bloody, yeah.
Oh no, Chris Beagle, don't say that. It was obviously a joke, look, at the end of the day. At the end of the day, people can miss things. And also, this is, it's, it's, this is different, isn't it? Interacting with chat and stuff rather than 100% um, concentration on, on a live game. So, you know, and there we go. So he's added a two plus, right? The problem, the problem with this catch, the thrower thing is it does add a two plus. So I'd, I'd want to just not have that two plus be made even though yes there are bonuses to doing it and you get to distribute the ball to somebody oh my god double rush is that right or could this guy have not filled the uh, top end no he couldn't so it had to be a dodge at some point oh but he could have done the dodge right this catcher could have double dodged one two three four five six seven no he couldn't no. had to be a double dodge or a rush you know same difference so he's in scoring range, but the the front is weak, right? The, the problem with this Venger bus is the front is weak. So he's going straight in the front. Oh. You can't jump over no squares, so you have to <laughs> add a bunch of dice, gets the pal near the tree, so that's good, the, really good, the tree being back corner there. And what's this in? Four plus in, four plus in, four plus pick up. I'm surprised he hasn't got. Okay, he's gone for the catcher. Yeah, you've, you've got to try this. Four re rolls, re roll the pick up. It gets instantly stripped. And clears one dancer. Yep, and then can clear the other dancer. Yep. And then can score with a catcher. I think this is probably right. Just score when you can because you 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 know you only need the draw. This would have been tougher if uh you know Serafino was one nil down, I don't you'd have probably had to try and stall it out to get the one nil win. But now, because he's ahead, you can just bang it in and make it a shootout. Obviously, Lamar's needing the win. Has to just score it too. Yeah. He really probably had to score in his offense, but he's just got to score in two now. Apple, um... It's six and two threes, honestly. It's six and two threes. I think you. I think you've got to have it on Woodells because of dancers. Right, that's the thing. With Woodells, I think you need it because of dancers, and you probably like it on Skaven because you've got a very good chance of using it on a badly hurt, and it could be on a gutter. I actually hate this from this from Lamar's, he might have run out of time. Right, like why have you left this guy here on purpose? I think he's, he's probably run out of time, he's probably absolutely out of time bank at this point in real life. Like this guy should have just absolutely been in as a scoring threat. You need scoring threat, you've got to bang it in two, you have to win this game, like you, you've got no choice, you have to score in two. Yeah, it depends on the team, yeah. Mostly I think it's better. Mo for, for, so for Swiss for Swiss tabletop tournaments, then I would always go Apple actually. I would actually always go Apple. Um because you can use it on a KO to win the drive to win the game. But if you've got, if you've got like overtime like this, then you can have the reserve so that your apple definitely works and you get it for overtime and it gives you the freedom to foul. So more players has got more value in this 
than Swiss tabletop. I think Swiss tabletop, it would I would always choose a map. Loves the Venger bus, doesn't he? The problem is without a driver, it's uh it's not really better than a normal cage, is it? It just dictates where they've got to leap in from. Like it should have been outwards. It should have been it should have been outwards so that uh, he's got to leap in here, which is a bit harder. He's running away. Fair enough, right? Protect his dancer. His, his sole remaining dancer. Oh my god, he rushed. He didn't even protect it, but that's really funny, isn't it? That's really funny. Just run away. Three dice blitz, correct. Yes, you would definitely take a nap on Necro if you could. <laughs> yes, Leap is now affected by attack as well. Yeah. Yeah, so it makes it means that you can like uh, actually play around Leap if you if you're down if you know if you've got a massive player advantage. Which you never could before, so else were always always in with a shot now. Now if they get cast out, it's worse for them than it used to be. Yes, yeah, pure do you know? Do you know what I mean though? You couldn't really, like, you, you know. Don't be a dick to mentor. <laughs> that, that was a... That was a riot. Funnily enough, Sergo had the chance to do it, didn't he? He had the chance for a full meat cube versus Kerfog and didn't do it. Yeah, that timeout basically kills the Mars chances, doesn't it? Completely. Completely kills the Mars chances. Got the H cage. H cage generally better than the Vengabus, right? Well, I mean, you could have a Vengabus with a driver for the same players, so. But now it's a 6 plus to leap in, which is very good. Do like a H cage. I mean, now you don't leap in, right? Now you're just dodging on the six. So you get the reroll. And in fact, this guy's acting like a Vengabus as well, isn't he? Very strong. He's just got a blitz in front. He's got a scoring threat. Could do a four plus dodge to then dodge in for a one D. Oh, he blitzed and then probably ran out of time again. I th I think they've both used like loads of their time bank, right? And they're running out of time, especially the Marses. I think it'll have run out run out of time then. Do you know what? Miko Silver, that probably does require a YouTube video. Um, to explain. Um, but I'll be on the YouTube videos after the World Cup. But, uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of... A lot of I mean, I can't do it while I'm commentating, so I guess. <laughs> but, yeah... It is Venger Buzz after the late 90s pop sensation Venger Buzz. That is correct, yeah. That is absolutely correct. So there you go, 2 1 for Serafino. If Lamar's can score two touchdowns in one turn, he'll win this game. Um, <laughs> he, 
You can get a, you can get a timeout and then a one turn and then another timeout or a uh, blitz. He doesn't get it. And that means even with a draw, Serafino will be progressing to the round of sixteen. He doesn't have two turns. End the flip and turn, man. He just wants to show what a glorious big brain he has. <laughs> Not doing this with a catcher for a free reroll, but he's running out of time as well, isn't he? And it doesn't matter. It's running out of time and it doesn't matter. And he gets the one turn, so... If he'd managed to score on his own offence... <laughs> He would have he would have won this game three two, uh, and if he hadn't lost the first game, he could have made it a game three. But the draw is not good enough for Lamar's, and Serafino wins and progresses to the round of sixteen, where he'll play Olivier Dulac in another Wood Elf Mirror, and the winner of that will be playing myself Randy Davo in the quarterfinals. So there you go. Um, Thanks for watching, everybody. And sorry, congratulations, Serafino. Commiserations, and Mars. Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.